All right. So in this module, we're going to extend our uh, conversation on polymers and talk about copolymers. So up to this point, we've been talking about what we call homopolymers. And these are where all of the repeat units are the same type. So polyethylene, you have carbon-carbon with four hydrogens. So everything is the same. But we can also make polymers with multiple repeat units. So maybe it's polyethylene here and then polypropylene elsewhere uh, or any type of repeat unit. And so when we have two or more repeat units in a chain um, or polymer, so it doesn't have to be a chain, it could be a network, this is known as a copolymer. And so uh, that's what's kind of shown here with the styrene and isoprene different structures in this polymer. So you have a styrene unit and you have, or sorry, a styrene unit and then an isoprene unit over here. So that's what a copolymer is. So before we get more into copolymers, um, I want you to kind of brainstorm why. So why would we go through this extra trouble of synthesizing copolymers compared to homopolymers? And so, uh, you know, you, know, you can kind of uh, ignore this part because this is for in-class in stuff, but uh, what I want you to do is see if you can um, come up with some ideas or idea about why we go through the trouble of creating a copolymer compared to a homopolymer. Do that on the quiz and then come back and we will discuss. All right, so hopefully you've had some time to come up with some ideas on maybe why uh, you would do a copolymer versus homopolymer. And um, a couple of things you might have came up with. Uh, one of them uh, may be just control. Uh, it might be easier for purity's sake if you can just um, add two different uh, repeat units instead of trying to purify. So it could be that. Uh, but um, one of the big reasons why we do this is because a copolymer is like a composite, a, a polymer composite. It allows us to vary the properties or combine the properties of both repeat units. And so it gives us properties of both. So we can kind of tailor for an application based on, I like the properties of this, plus I like the properties of this. So an example, uh, a couple examples here is uh, impact modified polystyrene. So polystyrene by itself uh, is something you've probably eaten out of, right? It's just one of these uh, cheap plastic containers. Uh, butadiene um, is uh, something that they make those little squishy uh, toys out of, right? And so um, if you can kind of envision the um, kind of the rubbery properties of this butadiene um, combined with uh, you know, the more brittle nature of polystyrene, uh, we can basically get something that slows the propagation of cracks. So it's kind of, again, modifies the impact um, properties of that. So we can get, um, um, have some impact uh, modification to that. Um, another example is uh, known as Napheon. So this is a commercial... Sorry about that. Uh, so this is a, a commercial pro uh, commercial uh, product. So it's trademarked, um, and it combines PTFE, which we've talked about, with uh, sulfonic acid. And so um, this basically makes a membrane, uh, and it has a, a PTFE or Teflon, as you may know it, uh, is very hydrophobic. It hate it doesn't like water, and so water tends to beat up. And then sulfonic acid is an acid, uh, so it does, it's very hydrophilic, it likes water. And so what that does is those two things combined together allow us to make a stable membrane where the PTFE creates kind of a backbone or structure to the film here. And then it forms uh, sulfonic acid channels in which can transport water and the ions and everything that come with water. And so basically we can use this as a hydrogen membrane. Um, this is used in low temperature fuel cells uh, as the membrane materi material between the cathode and the anode. But it, uh, it transports um, those molecules in the kind of water philic ch uh, chamber or channels here. And then the rest of that is the backbone, which is the Teflon. So it 
basically a, takes a hydrophobic and a hydrophilic thing and combines them to use the properties of both. All right, so let's talk about the ways in which we can bring copolymers together because it's not as simple as just adding two things together. There are different schemes that we can add them. The simplest or the most random would be the random where we have two, copol or two polymer repeat units, A and B, and they're randomly positioned along a chain. So you can kind of see here that we have um, A maybe represented, uh, yeah, A represented down here by, by red and black by uh, B. And so they're just kind of randomly dispersed along this chain. So here's a couple together, but then there's only one, and then there's a set of three. So it's very random. You can also alternate. So this is a very controlled pattern where you have A, B, A, B, A, B going back and forth. Uh, you can also have block copolymer. So this is where you have small chains of A and B and they form together. So you can see that you have five here, five here, and so forth. So you put these blocks together and form a chain from them. And then you can also have graft. This is basically where you have a chain of A, and then you form chains off or graft a chain of B um, off of one of those to form a kind of the branch structure that you see here. So that's known as graft. So there's different options in, for, in, in, in how we make these copolymers. And this is all going to be controlled by the synthesis method and um, how easy it is to do that. So obviously this is going to take a lot of effort to produce, uh, less so here. Um, and then this, uh, these two are, are typically fairly straightforward in, t in how we can do those. But the, the synthesis method is going to control how we can arrange these copolymers.